Hello there, I'm Stephen Fry, and these are my firsts on Virgin Radio. The first album I bought was called Tadpoles. It was by the Bonzo Dog Band, and it had written along the top, Tackle the tunes you tapped your tootsies to on Thames TV's Do Not Adjust Your Set. Because Do Not Adjust Your Set was a comedy sketch show that sort of came just before Monty Python. And the Bonzo Dog Band did some songs for it. Hence, Tackle the tunes you tapped your tootsies to on Thames TV's Do Not Adjust Your Set. The first concert I went to, if I, as I assume, you don't mean classical music concerts, because those were probably the first I went to. All right, all right, it doesn't make me a bad person, okay? You don't like it, that's fine. And, and oh, my parents would take me. Anyway, the first, what you might call modern, rockular, pop uh, kind of uh, concert I went to <laughs> was also a bit strange because it was in Norwich Cathedral. It was a band called Quintessence, who were a sort of heavy metal band. And I think they used to be, I don't know, they were, they were supported by Judas Priest, I think, so they were, you know, quite big in their day. And they had a vaguely spiritual dimension, so the Bishop of Norwich, probably wanting to show he was in with the kids, uh, they said, do come and play one of your concerts uh, at our cathedral. So my brother and I went. First time I went to watch Norwich City play, as a friend's parents took me when I was about 12, I think, which is pretty late, I grant you. And Norwich City was playing Everton and Lost. First TV show I... Well, I mean, like a lot of my generation, the children's TV I really got hooked on were things like um, Rent-A-Ghost, or Rent-A-Ghost, um, and um, uh, uh, Wor- not Wurzel and Cummidge, or quite like Wurzel and Cummidge, um, the Cat Weasel, loved Cat Weasel. He was a sort of wizard from the past who somehow appeared in the uh, present, and he was very... He, was, he could do magic, but he, he couldn't do technology, in which he called electricery. Um, he was really good. Um, and, of course, Doctor Who. In fact, one of the most traumatic experiences in my life was when we moved house from Buckinghamshire, where I spent my first few years, to Norfolk. And the, t- the television somehow got broken in the move. It was about the size of, uh, of, of an iPhone, <laughs> the screen. It was absolutely tiny as television screens were in those days. But I'd watched the first episode with my brother of Doctor Who. And we'd moved house in the, a few days afterwards. And we couldn't watch the second because the television didn't work. And I've, I'll never get that back. I have since watched it uh, because you can now thanks to the internet and things. But it, it's, uh, yeah, it stayed with me as a kind of terrible, terrible wound. My first paid job, oh, I think it was a waiter. Yeah, I was often a waiter. There was uh, the Hotel de Paris in Croman, the north coast of uh, Norfolk, uh, used to offer you quite what seemed like a lot of money to work for 10 days over Christmas. It was unbelievably hard work, and you stayed in a kind of attic at the top of the hotel, which was a grand Victorian thing overlooking the sea. Um, and yes, I, that's where I learned to do silver service, which was considered so smart. We you know, put the fork on top of the spoon and, and use it as this kind of chopsticky thing, only backwards. No, it's, yeah, you, you don't need to know. The first Christmas present, I, I, it, was, um, it was a little thing, you, you, you put it over your eyes, um, over, two eyes, look, sort of like binoculars. Um, and uh, these, a, c- a circle went in at the bottom, which contained slides, colored slides, and you pressed a little thing and the new slides would come round. It was made by a company called Chad Valley, I seem to remember, it was plastic and in primary colors, like a sort of, you know, as things are for children. And I was absolutely awestruck by it. I, I think just this, these, Images. I mean, there were some mountain scenes and stuff like that, nothing dramatic, but uh, maybe that's where my love of television and cinema was born. First friend I remember, I think it was Amanda Brooke at uh, a sort of preschool thing. Um, I announced very solemnly to my parents that I was going to marry her, um, and she was my girlfriend. I was about four or something. Um, and uh, I hope Amanda Brook is very, very well, but I was 
you know, for about three years, we would hold hands together and everything totally sweet. The first poster I put on in, in my bedroom wall was a reproduction of a Toulouse-Lautrec uh, Aristide Bruant, um, uh, one of those Moulin Rouge, um, you know, uh, things, Sacré Coeur, you know, that, those French cafe scenes. Uh, brilliant poster. But then I, it, it, we had a fashion, our generation of, of sort of pre-teens and teens, which was to cut pictures and images out of magazines. Um, you'd buy whole stacks of old magazines and you'd read your parents' Sunday supplement magazines and you'd cut out whether it was a, an outline of a, I don't know, a cognac bottle or something. And I had a whole load of old film magazines and I, and I had my, my whole room, my bedroom was covered in these, they weren't posters, they were cutouts that I put on the wall with blue tag. Um, and I had, I had Groucho Marx and scenes from uh, uh, La Dolce Vita, the Fellini film, and um, King Kong, and you know, just, you know, the way, it's a very important thing for, for adolescents, isn't it, somehow, to, to make that mark, and that's what I did. <laughs>